Hi, I'm your host, Vasco Duarte. Welcome to the Scrum Master Toolbox podcast, where we share tips and tricks from Scrum Masters around the world. Every day, we bring you inspiring answers to important questions that all Scrum Masters face day after day. Hello, everybody. This week, we have with us Miguel Moro, and uh, very quickly, we will jump into leadership discussions. But first, hey, Miguel, welcome back. Hi, hi again. A pleasure to be here again. So when I talk about leadership in the context of change, uh, of course, as Scrum Masters, we need to acknowledge that we work with change every single day, but not as implementers for somebody else's idea of what the change should be, but rather as a leader for the change that needs to happen. Somebody it is, somebody else, sometimes it is somebody else's idea. Other times it's just a small issue in the team that needs to be solved with a change in process or a change in the definition of done. And of course, very often we're involved in agile adoption or agile transformations that are going on. And, and that's also a leadership change, leadership work that we need to do, of course. So Miguel, tell us a little bit about a change process you were involved with. You know, give us a little bit the context, the uh, size of the company, what was the goal uh, that we had for that, and then walk us through how you and, and the teams there kind of implemented that, how you led the change in practice. What were the steps, the, the tips, the tricks, the techniques, the tools you used back then that you still use today? Well, um, I had some, yeah, I, 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 I participated in, in, in some transformation uh, process. And uh, well, this was in a, in a company that was working, was, was growing of science uh, startup to a medium size. And uh, well, um, I, I was called to, to, join the, um, to join the company by, by a colleague that uh, he was uh, hired to create a group of uh, what well, we call it ourselves of agilists in the company. So we were not purely scrum masters, but we were working with the teams and also a bit with the company. So it was a very typical company where there were uh, like a project project manager and 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 they were moving to to work in a to to try to to work in a more collaborative participative uh, way. Um, so they created a group. Uh, as I told you, uh, we were a, a group of uh, four people trying to help the teams and and the company. And well, fortunately, we had the, the, the power of doing things. The, the man management in the company trusted us and, and led us to, to do things. And well, first thing we started was like trying to, I don't know how to say, to create a culture, maybe. I think it's very important that um, you create an, an atmosphere where people is... Um, is comfortable by by participating, by innovating, and and by, by how did you do that in practice? Like, what were some of the concrete things you did in order to create that atmosphere? Yes, well, first thing we did is uh, to to sh to share to share knowledge to sh to to collaborate, and for example, we started um, uh, proposing that uh, developers participated in the design of the of the uh, product with product owners. We implemented the double track concept of discovery and delivery so that um, developers were involved in the process of uh, the, the product owner was proposing what to do and they were deciding how to do it and working together with the user experience expert and the product owner, the team was um, proposing uh, ways of, of doing things. Uh, also, uh, we started proposing people to do workshops or talks uh, frequently, so that every week we had at least one workshop and one talk done. And by... this was by people in the company that were kind of sharing the knowledge with yeah. each other. Internal, done by developers, and they they were proposing and, and they did it. We also something very interesting. I, I like it very much. Uh, we created like a, a reading club. Uh, we started uh, reading. Uh, so software craftsmanship, clean code, and, and this type of uh, uh, XP. 
So we started to comment uh, these books of good practices on, on how to do things that many people didn't didn't know and and were uh, some some uh, others that had already worked with these practices were uh, also participating and 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 we were commenting and, and putting some things into practice after each chapter we we review it together. And well, another thing we did, um, we did um, that we liked it was to let people participate in other teams uh, in a temporary way. They were they could uh, join other team that uh, they liked it or they were they were curious about the work that was done there, so that they learned other parts of the company or or of the product. So uh, they have quite much uh, freedom to to move around in, in the company and, and that was really beneficial um, I didn't talk about uh, any concrete methodology or, or uh, scrum or Kanban or whatever and well we started proposing to work in in something like a scrum and then um, we let the the teams to to make their proposal uh, to improve or we also gave some uh, some talks or some workshops to to start working in in scrum and we also show with a bit of, of kanban how it worked what was uh, different with uh, with scrum and with other methodology some teams started to decide uh, how they wanted to work regarding uh, methodologies in fact, some, some of them already were using this, even they didn't know or they didn't call it like uh, like Agile, but they were already using it at the end. It's, it's so it sounds to me technology. that you were trying to, uh, instead of pushing Agile, you were trying to create kind of almost like a, a bazaar, right? Like a supermarket of ideas with the reading club and the workshops. And you were then supporting the teams that wanted to take those ideas and put them in practice. Is that what you were doing? Yes, of course. Uh, it looks like we came one day and we put all of this together there and it's not that way. We started step by step. It, it, it was a process that took almost a year so that we started uh, doing uh, things uh, one by one, introducing new things uh, one by one. And also, I, what I always find the most difficult is to, to make or to, to manage the people take initiative and they open because many times people are used to receive, receive instructions and, and they, uh, they are not allowed to, to decide. So many, many times people are just, uh, just let me what to do, tell me what to do. And, but, but you need to change that uh, mindset of uh, uh, let the people know that they can propose things that if you have an, uh, a failure, it doesn't matter. You can learn from there. So the, the most challenging thing was to change the mindset of the people. Once you start having people collaborating, they accept whatever you can propose. And so you, you said change the mindset, and this is important because mindset is a, f a f very fuzzy word, like it can mean many different things. Yeah. So in your context and in the context of bringing change through sharing information and allowing people to either, you know, even change teams here and there, like what do you mean by mindset? Well, I was trying to, to, to refer to the way of that people were thinking in, in the teams. So they were thinking that uh, they had to be told what to do and how to do it and to change to the, just the opposite, that they were going to, to, to be the ones that decided or proposed how to do things. So it's, it's very difficult uh, sometimes to, to do that change. Also depends on, on people, specific people are more proactive and, and open very quickly. Some others uh, try to resist to change as, as you know. So uh, that, I think that is the, the, most, uh, the most difficult thing. Once you manage that people make the click in their mind, it is, it is amazing how they can evolve. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I really like the, the way you went about giving the example, right? Like making information available, telling teams, hey, telling team members, hey, you can change team if you want, but you know, you don't need to, right? Like, because that really speaks to growing 
the team's own initiative to growing their ability to make decisions and drive things forward on their own? Yeah, yeah, of course. I think, uh, um, well, it is it is amazing, as I told, the, um, the capacity of a team to, to change things when you let them um, to do things by themselves or to propose. So it is, um, it is what, at the end, is just to to make them aware that uh, things need to be logic. So if you have a good idea, please share it. Or if you want to to propose something that is going to be uh, good for the team or for the customer, just go on with that. And and that is the the more difficult part. What, with uh, what I have seen in different companies is to to make people to empower people to to make people take the the the, the lead. Absolutely. Miguel, thank you for sharing that story with us. No problem. Thank you for letting me share. Leading change is one of the core skills we must acquire, but it is only one of the steps towards our success as Scrum Masters. Tomorrow, on Success Thursday, we will talk about how to define success for the Scrum Master role, we'll cover tips on how to measure your way to that position, and most importantly, how to develop that focus on continuous improvement that is as important for Scrum Masters as it is for teams. See you tomorrow. We really hope you liked our show. And if you did, why not rate this podcast on Stitcher or iTunes? Share this podcast and let other Scrum Masters know about this valuable resource for their work. Remember that sharing is caring. Thank you.